Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today I'm once again in Gondor. Well, not Gondor, but Gondor. Gondor, not Gondor. With another awesome metal sculpt from the Middle Earth strategy battle game, Range, Angbor the Fearless, a towering and terrifying hero of the Fiefdoms with a sword that's about as long as he is. This step by step guide will give you a hero who will strike fear into the heart of his not quite so fearless foes on the tabletop. And in the absence of tartan paint, I have a foolproof, easy to follow and replicate recipe for creating the synonymous tartan detailing on his kilt. Now, once you have your model prepped, Undercoat this with Chaos Black Spray and get your brushes ready guys, let's get painting! Base Colours The face and hands were base coated with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flashdown, making sure to get his big ears and get a smooth covering over the top of his head. The hair and beard were then given a base coat using Skaven Black Dinge. All the armour now, the scale mail, gauntlets and leg guards were given a base coat with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of lead belcher and Kaeldor sky. This will give a subtle bluish tone to the metal which will marry in with the rest of the 5 tons I've painted on the channel so far. The huge great big sword blade and pommel details were then base coated using iron hand steel. The kilt and cloth over his back were base coated with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Teclis Blue and the Fang, the Fang helping to tone down the Teclis vibrancy just ever so slightly. The strappings over the pommel were picked out carefully with a 50 50 mix of Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide. The undercloth, boots and trousers were picked out with a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Abaddon Black. And finally the straps on the reverse of the leg guards base coated with Rhinox Hide. Skin a pre-shade layer was applied to all Angbor's skin with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, as we always do here trying to define the more detailed areas of the face before applying the all over shade. An all over shade was then applied using Reichlin Flesh Shade, diluted down with some Lamia Medium. Once the wash was dry, I layered up the skin again now using pure Cadian flesh tone, covering the top of his head once again and creating some definition around the eyes and cheekbones. I slowly started to build up the highlights and definition over his hands and face by adding Kislev flesh in gradually, starting to focus on the more pronounced musculature and features. continuing to add Kislev Flesh gradually until I reached a tone I was happy with overall. At this stage my mix was an approximate 50-50 split between Akkadian and Kislev. You can of course go lighter or darker should you wish for your model. The eye recesses were picked out using Abaddon Black. and finished off with two dots of Pallid Witch Flesh. Hair and Beard The hair and beard were given a shade using Nuln Oil. The texture of the hair is very close together here, so this works better than a manual shade would at this stage. Once the wash is dry, carefully start layering up over the hair strands now with a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Skaven Black Dinge, 
leaving the null oil recess shade showing in the recesses between the hairs and around the facial hair to help frame it a bit more. Continue building up the layers gradually with additions of Ulthran Grey in the mix, with each pass focusing on the more pronounced areas of hair and working down towards the edge of the beard and moustache. My mix here started at a 4 to 1 ratio split in favour of the previous layer mix. It then finished at a 3 to 1 ratio split as I continued building up the flow and detail of the hair by adding more Ulthran in small increments. Now the Ulthran has a very slight blue tinge to it so it will complement the overall tones of the model in a very subtle way. For a final dot highlight you can add some white scar into the overall mix and apply this across the hairline, tips of the hair and framing the upper and lower areas of facial hair should you wish. Armour All of the armour plating was given a gentle, light glaze using Tyron Blue. This will just help accentuate the subtle blue hue I have running through the metals here. With this dry, a second shade was applied with Null Oil, this time less diluted to tone down the armour and the brightness of the silvers. The sword and grey cloth can also be shaded at this point to save time and precious Null Oil later on. All the armour now was framed with a post-shade layer with a 4 to 1 mix of Ironbreaker and Techless Blue, simultaneously highlighting, raising the tone of the armour and maintaining consistency with the subtle blue undertones that run throughout. With the framing layer in place, you can build up the highlights as bright as you wish here by adding Pallid Witch Flesh into the previous layer mix. Be wary though, too much Pallid will ultimately desaturate the mix and start upsetting the overall look. I recommend no more than about a third of a Pallid Witch Flesh addition to your final highlight stage. The edge of the sword blade was given a solid highlight now using Iron Breaker, just to give it some sharpness. Blue cloth and tartan. An all over shade was first applied to all the blue cloth using Drakenhof Nightshade. The recesses over the kilt and particularly the back of the cloth are very well defined so try not to be too heavy handed here. When the wash is dry, slowly start layering up all the blues now by adding low therm blue into the base coat mix at an approximate 2 third to 1 third split. Take special care here to leave the recesses still showing the shade build up the definition between the lighter and darker sections of material. Continue building up the layers now by adding Temple Guard Blue into the mix at the same approximate ratio. Now I am jumping hues here quite a bit, but remember there's going to be a tartan freehand covering most of the kilt detailing, so this doesn't need quite as much time spent on it as I would do usually. The back cloth however really benefits from multiple layers and highlights, building up the very defined texture, so I recommend when it comes to the final highlight stage, adding the Baharoth blue in gradually over this section and creating a gradual blend from dark to light. The kilt doesn't benefit so much from this here, but now we're on to the fun part.
Well, in the absence of tartan paint, we have to make to do with this hopefully quick, easy, and really effective way of creating the tartan texture. To start with, I painted the grid over the whole kilt using pure Baharoth blue. With the highlights of the kilt not being quite this bright, I, this will show up really well here and won't look out of place if applied in a super controlled manner and with a good point to your brush. With the initial grid in place and keeping as fine a point to my brush as possible, I added a second grid to the kilt using pallid butch flesh, but this time I slightly offset it to the right and upwards respectively. Try to keep the gaps between the two grids as uniform and consistent as possible and don't offset this too much. I'm not looking for a cross hatch here. And I can't stress enough here, take your time and if you need to take a patience or eye break, please make sure you do so. Extra details. The strappings on the sword hilt were given a quick targeted shade using Agrax Earthshade. The shaft was then layered up by adding Carrick Stone into the base coat mix at a 3 to 1 ratio. Adding more Carrick Stone into the mix, further defining the upper cloth and creating the wood grain effect on the shaft itself. Finally, applying a quick edge highlight with pure Carrick Stone just to make it pop a little bit more. The grey cloth areas were given a layer by increasing the Storm Vermin fur in the base coat mix, leaving the null oil wash I applied earlier showing in all the recesses. The boots and calves were then framed and the folds over the elbows defined more with a highlight using pure storm vermin fur. At this point the straps on the legs were highlighted quickly using Gorthor Brown. and the brooch by his neck picked out carefully with Rune Lord Brass. Angbor the Fearless, a fine figure of a man with an equally fine and rather terrifying looking sword, ready to cleave orcs a twain. I'm sure this particular character comes with a six foot restraining order. I certainly hope you're all feeling a lot more fearless, now the sting has hopefully been taken out of the complex tartan of rehanding. The base was finished off using my five minute basis tutorial elsewhere on the channel. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for the December schedule video going live at the weekend and as always guys, take care and happy hobbying.